Ah, hi. Uh, so this is um, Yoga Solutions with Mark J. Aquaviva. My, your, uh, uh, that's the, my starting bell. Uh, your weekly, oh, hi, Jen. Your weekly uh, yoga spot on Facebook. Oh, I have a question already. That's great. Um, oh, Abigail's posted. Oh, it's from Jan, I see. Um, more more standing practice to build on last week's class. Okay, great. Thank you, Jan. Uh, yes. So I just need to uh, arrive in my... Hi, Julie. Nice to see you. Arrive in my garden. Um, uh, today, I'm going to try and... Um, um, keep it down to 20 minutes. Uh, I, I'm, I'm currently working on giving um, giving less, not for any other reason than uh, I tend to I tend to give too much and overwhelm people. So the uh, and um, well, I work with very simple things, and um, and I I try to I try to give the whole thing in one go sometimes. Um, because uh, I, I, want, I just want to help guide people to an experience that is free of conflict, basically. But um, sometimes in the over-giving, the, the depth and value of the simplest of things is missed. So I'm going to try and keep it down to 20 minutes. So I've just set myself a timer. And I've just uh, spent a minute and a half talking about how I'm going to spend less time. <laughs> so yes, um, usual stuff. Let's see. So yes, I'll get on with that subject. That's uh, that's, that's great, Jan. Thank you. you know, Building on standing and practice and walking that sort of thing. Um, I was also uh, when I was practicing just before or, or meditating actually, I was contemplating what it is that I do. You know. Um, I, I call myself a yoga teacher. Hi, Alan. Good to see you. Um, I call myself uh, a yoga teacher because um, yoga is the format that I work with. Um, hmm. Yes, I agree, Julie. Um, yes, uh, but uh, the thing that I teach is not what... Not really what most people would think of as if you if you ask someone what yoga is, they wouldn't really think of the thing that I do, because because what I do is I, I help people find. Well, I share I share my own experience. My my own experience is is in developing harmony in relationships between parts of myself as a solution to uh, the feeling of restriction. You know, if there's a restriction in my body, if there's a restriction in myself, I, I work with removing the conflict so as to liberate the natural function, um, which is a, a, makes sense, makes sense. But it's not a doing to the body, and this is this is the the thing that's different. It's um, it's a reversal of the Western paradigm of um, breathing. Okay, Gizmo. Um, Yes, uh, breathing is always involved in um, in my practice. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, we breathe all the time, so to exclude it from physical practice seems a bit nonsense. So I will definitely bring breathing awareness into what we're doing. So what was I saying? I don't want to spend too long um, talking about myself, but um, yes, yeah, so th the thing that I do that's different, I think, is it's about um oh it's jasmine okay <laughs> all right hi hi jasmine um yeah, the thing that i do that i think is different from what people think of as yoga is i invite people to embody it, it's a simple thing so it's, it's a bit of a buzzword that's a bit overused so it's meaning is is getting a little lost um, what do I mean by embody? I mean, instead of doing things to the body, you enter the nature of the body. You take your, your mind 
out of the strategic sort of position of working out what to do to things, uh, out of the past, fear of the you know, uh, reaction to the past, out of fear of the future or, or projection into the future, and into presence, which to me is yoga. Um, and the methodology is different because of that. So, so I, I, um, I take people through attending to conditions, uh, attending to the environment that they are working with. Um, I take the mind into working with simple things like um, how you're touching the earth, for example, how, how you're supporting yourself through contact. Um, and where you are in space, your boundaries, um, the, the, the meeting of space. And then when, when you can engage with these things, then you can organize yourself into a relationship between those things, earth and space, where there is less conflict within you. And then the third journey is an inward one. The third journey is um, self-referring to that which is going on on the inside, um, but from this natural engagement with the world and life. Um, it's about being in nature, which is you know, why I'm obsessed about being in my garden. It's, you know, that the nature is not just all around me here, but it, it reminds me, it reminds me. And what it reminds me of is that the, the place I get my clues from, the, the, the place that I understand reality from, is from the nature of the body. No, I, I am nature in here. So uh, if I can take my awareness to that place, from the nature all around me, hi Kishore, good to see you. Um, then that's where that I become an authority in, in my own movement, in my own practice, you see. So, um, yes, and, and that's available to each of you. you know. the, the, the nature that we are trying to access is not just all around us. It's not, you know, it helps to be in nature, especially if you're in your head. Um, taking yourself into nature will allow you to soften that control sort of element. Um, but if you can tune into the fact that uh, this flesh, these bones, this breathing, these, these fluid spaces, these organs, it's all nature. And the way it functions is, is, is amazing if you simply uh, take out the complications, you know. So um, uh, it's the nature within you, Kishori, in, inside your body. Your body holds everything that you understand about the cosmos. And yours, Jasmine, Julie, Alan, each of you, Abigail, Jan, everyone. It's inside you, and, and that's what I'm trying to share. Um, I'm trying to help, help people access the nature. So um, just to start, Okay, um, yeah. or maybe uh, if, if the audio is not so good, um, um, Jan, then maybe it would be better on catch up when you watch it afterwards. So uh, just to start, um, let's see. Wherever you are, just as you are, um, just be involved with where you touch the ground. And uh, we will do some standing stuff in a, in a little while. But just as you are, whether you're in a chair or sitting in Lotus, or, so it doesn't matter. If you're standing, it's fine. If you're in the kitchen doing washing up, it's all good. Okay. Um, take, first of all, take your attention to the contact you make with the earth or any other surface that you're using for support. And the contact you make with space. And that's through your skin, and um, that's uh, <laughs> another reason. Um, I, uh, part of being in nature for me is about, um, you know, feeling feeling the air on my skin. So, I, uh, so I often 
get my top off. <laughs> Tap staff, as I'm known in Scotland. Um, so be with your touch, be with space. And if you can engage with those things in a way that allows you the space to breathe, so you allow things to move, you allow things to change as you try and make your touch equal, even, between the earth, between contact and between uh, and space that you occupy. If you can have a sense of engaging with those things equally through breathing, then you will discover a position in space where where the the breath arrives freely and it'll be different. Once you've found that position, your job is to stay there as you release the breath. And when you do that, something will happen on the inside. And that's where the yoga begins, you see. Excuse me. <laughs> so once you've um, you know, found support from your touch, once you've occupied space in a way that gives you the space to breathe, and there are practices that help you find that, then those two things together have rearranged the body to a position where you're not sort of hanging your weight or holding yourself up, to a position where you can breathe. You can breathe what you're doing. And if you decide to stay there as you release the breath, then something will change on the inside. And what changes is uh, you move into a more sort of centralized position to what you're doing. And it's the spine that tends to move into that position. Okay. So I have eight, eight more minutes, so I'm going to stick to my 20 minute thing. So let, let's take it to standing. There's my mat. So if we've accessed this, um, this space, and let's say um, upper belly, lower belly, um, the, 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 the place that we carry most of our weight, the, the organs, um, this, this fluid container, uh, if we've accessed the, the center of things um, as opposed to the external thing of carrying weight or the external thing of carrying weight. No, I'm exaggerating, but... Um, and we can find that in standing as well. So it's quite good to have the legs do slightly different things so that you um, don't go into habitual you know, patterns. So maybe one little step forwards, one little step back with no intention to go anywhere in. The job is to, first of all, explore where your support is and to help the upper body i would have the hands touch as well so where your where your contact is with your earth and any other surface to feel supported that's what we're looking for to feel support from what we are doing and, and uh you don't do this with your head you have to you know you touch with your feet with your you use your legs <laughs> Um, organizing these things from your head is is, um, is a very strange thing to do and gets in the way of the yoga. So do it through, in this moment, through your sensory perception, through your feeling of having feet and the engagement of touch to support yourself. Do it. Don't just feel that the hands are touching. Use your hands to support space in your, in your, in your ribs, in your lungs, around the heart. Use it. You know, you've got bones that support you. So use them. You've got bones that support you, so use them. And then um, that helps you, that might help you meet your surface, meet your boundaries. Uh, the space behind you particularly, um, this is the place that most people hide from as they lift or try and get away from space. Or here, it's another thing, if you're lurching forwards with your face, for example, we tend to pull away from space behind us. So the space behind you, is a surface, it's, um, it's your own edges that you can breathe into 
and the space either side of you is another as it equally um we are equally blind to it so rather than looking listen listen to the side and breathe and when your touch and relationship to space kind of equal each other through breathing and its release then with the release of the breath there will be a deflation towards the center of this space and that's the bit that I'm interested in. Can you, this is when the yoga starts, you see, because from this centralization, as opposed from the lift or the drop, from this centralized experience of emptying, we access the fluid body and there is a potential to release in two directions. From the downward touch, to, uh, through to the downward touch of the foot and through to the upward contact with the heavens through the crown. It's a potential. If we can create the right conditions, and I'm changing legs just to try something so I don't get stuck. So it's this space in here. How do I how do I organize this myself in space? How do I organize my touch so as to support this space front and back? So that it can breathe. Doesn't really matter how you do that. The clue, are, the clue is in make your touch equal. So if my feet equal each other, the action of touch equals. If the action of the hands are equal to each other, I'm likely to be supported in touch and and space in a way that allows me to centralize the breath, from time back, and with its release. The release of pressure and it brings me together allows an up down feeling through the spine from the feet going down. Now, when that becomes a release of tension, then what you have is the much desired core support. It's not the same as. Uh, using overworking muscles to try and lift weight. It's not the tension around your middle that stops the spine from moving. It's a response to releasing the breath and tension to your touch so that you can release from that central um, let go from the ground through this space into whatever position you wish to be. And this becomes my yoga practice, you see? The attempt to organize things, to create the right conditions for the centralized release of the breath in these core spaces. And it's not limited to here and here. It's the whole of me. And that bell means um, I've got two minutes. And it ends up being very, very, very simple. I want to be in space. I want it to come from the way I touch the ground. Um, no amount of, uh, I don't know, just doing the, doing the thing will work. That makes, that makes muscles um, hold me in position. But if I can create the condition of support from my touch, support from the surfaces that I tend to back away from in space, so using space to breathe, to feel supported. If I can equalize those things, then the result is a body that can breathe. If I can also release the breath without losing that position in space, something else happens with the breath. Deep in this, in this uh, space that uh, lives along the front of the spine, and it's from the root all the way to the skull. And if this central um, release towards the center, if, if this um, axial kind of release of pressure is with me, this becomes the source of relaxed movement. As in, I let go of tension with the release of the breath. And the result is I become taller, more supported, 
the result is I become stronger, more supported, and more able to relax in space. So it makes, makes the yoga look incredibly easy. And um, I suppose it is. Um, it's because, well, what are we trying to do? I think we're trying to develop ease. I think that's the intention. So if you practice with that intent, um, I've given you three clues there. Use the earth, use your touch, be with space, breathe it. Mm -hmm. If you can work that one out and release the breath and you'll be in your center, and then it's the release of the breath in the center that moves you through touch and space. There you go. It's a whole of yoga for you. Um, okay. So that's me. I'm going to try and keep it to 20 minutes. Um, I am Mark J. Aquaviva of the Aquaviva School of Yoga. Thank you very much for watching. Um, if you uh, gained any benefit or can think of someone that would, please share it on, pass it on to um, uh, any groups or people's pages or whatever. Um, I'm, I'm on a bit of a mission to share this stuff, as you might have picked up. <laughs> um, and all help is... All assistance in this is very gratefully received. Um, I, I just want, I, I want, I want, it, it, seems, it seems so obvious, this stuff to me. Um, it seems so obvious that this is the way forwards with um, relationship to the body. I, I, and it's available to everyone, absolutely everyone. So do share. Uh, we have stuff, stuff coming up. I've got a yoga holiday in Turkey um, uh, at the lovely Huzur of Adasi with... Um, Tuesday McNeil. Um, I'll be teaching in the afternoon there. Uh, the flights are dirt cheap at the moment because of the political situation, but it's a, it's a lovely place. Uh, I, went, I was there last year in the thick of the um, political difficulties, and I didn't even notice because we were up in the hills, and there's a lovely beach around the corner. So um, there's a couple of places left on that, I think. Um, what else? Uh, yoga in the garden. After, when I come back, uh, end of July, beginning of August, uh, I'll be doing a couple of weeks of yoga in the garden, morning sessions in the garden. Afternoon, I'll be um, doing uh, half price one to ones for people that want to book. Um, half price is uh, forty pounds for an hour. Um, yes, that's about it. Uh, but I'm sure there's other things, but I can't think of what they are at the moment. There might still be one place left on our in Sabina retreat in Italy. It's the it's the intensive, the Aquaviva intensive. Um, uh, it's a, it's a life-changing experience if you can apply yourself to it. Um, I think that'll do me. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Mark J. Aquaviva of the Aquaviva School of Yoga. Do join me again next week. Uh, I think I'm here next week. Yes, I am. Um, 10.30. Uh, and yes, namaste. <laughs>